like to turn to WHO's Regional Director for Europe, Dr. Hans Kluge. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Minister, Jack, Clara, our colleagues from the press. It's been quite a week so far at our Youth Forum in Tirana, WHO Europe's first ever gathering of its kind. Ever since I arrived yesterday, I have truly been bowled over by the sheer energy at the Forum. As Jack was mentioning, over 150 young persons full of activism, drive and passion with us in the same room and a large number joining us online as well. I have been determined that WHO Europe would launch a youth health network for quite some time now. With both my daughter's experience pushing me all the more. When my older daughter went to England to study amid the pandemic last year, she was struck by how many of her contemporaries were depressed on medication or in therapy. Adding to the pandemic and its huge impact on physical and mental health, we have so many other crises impacting young people. The climate crisis, the devastating war in Ukraine, that impacted so many countries, economic and political uncertainties. Then even while young people these days have so much freedom in so many ways, compared to what I had when I was their age, they're also stressed on so many fronts, including the impact of the interactive online world, where we see an infodemic of misinformation including fake news about health issues. And then you have cyberbullying, and the list goes on. It's never easy being young, but these days it seems to be even more challenging. But it's not all doom and gloom, of course. Looking at the young persons here this week, full of determination to be included in health decision-making and have a seat at the policy table, this fills me with hope that we are in good hands. Young people are not the decision makers of tomorrow. They are decision makers of today. And this is why WHO Europe is determined that we will help create the space that young persons need to be included in helping shape the decisions, policies and laws that shape their lives and that of their beloved ones. In creating Youth for Health, we are working with young persons to build a genuine network. We will be asking all our 53 member states across Europe and Central Asia to endorse it at our next regional committee in September 2023, WHO Europe's highest decision-making body consisting of all 53 ministers of health. By governments endorsing Youth for Health, it paves the way for stronger, sustainable youth representation at the policy and decision-making table. Over the next year, leading up to the Regional Committee, we will work with the Youth for Health Network to identify regional opportunities for youth representation, including mental health, digital health and health emergencies. This will be both through existing initiatives, for example, the Pan-European Mental Health Coalition, and other platforms that can expand to add a youth component. We will include youth consultation from the very outset of key initiatives so that young persons are effectively, as Jack was mentioning, co-designers and sounding boards for the work the WHO Europe is doing. The Youth for Health Network will find waves, ways with WHO Europe support along with key partners like UNFPA for youth inclusion at the national level and the local level, because that's where the greatest impact will be felt over time. I personally want to see as wide a representation as possible in the process, including youth with disabilities, young persons of diverse sexual orientation and gender identity, youth from often marginalized ethnic groups and communities, because we believe in leaving no one behind. Our Youth for Health Network will meet in person once every two years 
with this week's Tirana Forum, the inaugural edition. And honestly, where could it be done better? In the European capital of youth. This week's forum in Tirana has been shaped by the young people themselves, including the agenda topics. And it's been excellent to see such a beautifully crafted forum. But it's only the start. Success of this first Youth for Health Forum for me will be if young people can come up with concrete, pragmatic ideas prioritized on how they can contribute to health policies which take into account the almost 350 million young people in this region, one out of three, especially those whose voice never reaches us. I want to warmly thank Minister Dr. Manister Liu for your leadership, Madam Minister, for having immediately agreed to hold this forum and for your many innovative health policy initiatives in this country and also the Mayor of Tirana who was with us to open the forum yesterday, along with UNFPA and all of you who helped make it happening. I'm very much looking forward to doing great work together. Thank you.